Well, family and friends, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. We love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. There's none that has been like him. There's none like him even now and there's none like him to come. Amen. And we are, we're so mm -hmm. glad. Amen. That we are on the Lord's side. Amen. Amen. And God is with us. And if he be for us, who could be against us? Amen. Amen. And we're just thankful unto God. And before we uh, uh, start our Bible study, we're actually going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to ask you, uh, Sister Wanda Staples, you lead us in prayer on tonight. Amen. Open up our Bible study. God bless you. Oh, Father, we thank you for bringing us together. One more time, Lord. We thank you for each and every person that's on the line, uh, for each and every one that will come on the line later on. We thank you, Lord, for our uh, teacher. And Lord, we ask you to open up our understanding, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, help us to retain what we hear. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, family and friends, amen. Amen for those of you that are watching this over the internet. Amen. We're going to get ready to jump right in. Amen. We're gonna, we're gonna um, I'm gonna do a screen share. Uh, one moment. Uh, I'm encouraging everybody, if you will, get a, a pen, a piece of paper. Uh, we're also, we're also gonna go to a lot of these scriptures on tonight, too, as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. One moment. Let me do the screen share. All right, can y'all see my screen? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a subject we're going to deal with on tonight. Why people fail God. Why do people fail God? All right. There's many reasons as to why, uh, uh, but they all lead to the same ultimate destruction. Amen. And we want to talk and discuss about that on tonight. We're going to, uh, let me see, let me move this up a little bit here. All right. And hopefully, if more people join us, I'll be able to bring them in. No. All right. Uh, why do people fail God? All right. Well, mm -hmm. uh, one moment, please. Uh, we have more people coming in. All right. Why do people fail God? All right. Let's jump right in. All right. Let's start off by saying that many people are, in fact, failures. You know, at some point in time in our lives, and we could all relate to this, uh, we've all failed at different things, various things in our lives. All right. Um, I believe everyone at some point in their life has uh, have failed at something. All right. Um, but uh, they, uh, and what happens? A lot of people fail socially. They fail uh, loved ones. They, uh, they failed their friends. All right. Uh, they failed in business. They've even Thank failed. You. They've even failed in school. Thank all right. All right. Most of the, now, most of the time, uh, please uh, mute yourself out if you got background noise. All right. Most of the time we realize that the truth, uh, the truth is that they fail oftentimes because they did not seek passion. All right. There are a lot of times two people. In fact, the truth be told, people are lazy and indifferent. All right. They only uh, they only thought about uh, their own selves. All right. One moment. Everyone got more people coming in. All right. So how do in fact we want to talk and deal with on tonight? And what the scriptures tell us and share will show us in regards to how do people in fact fail God. We're going to talk about that tonight. Number one, they failed to count the cost. All right. Before conversion, they failed to, to, to take the cost, in fact, into account. Uh, Jesus was talking in Luke chapter 14, verses 23 and uh, through 35. I'm going to go there. And if you want, you could jot it down if you want to turn there real quickly with me, because I'm going to move real fast in regards to these scriptures. All right, but Luke chapter 14, verse 25 through 35. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 35. It says, and, he, and there was a great multitude that was with him, with who? With Jesus. And as he turned and they said unto him, if any man come to me, hate not his father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. See, God was letting them know that there, uh, uh, he didn't want no one. He didn't want you putting anybody, any, not anybody, anyone before him. Verse 17, 27. And whosoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build 
uh, intended to build a tower, six, six, sixtieth, uh, sixtieth, not down first and count up the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. All right. Verse 29, unless happily after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build a tower was not finished. Or what king would go to make a war against another king, uh, another king, and sit of not down first, consulted whether or not he'd be able with 10,000 to meet them that come up against him with the 20,000. Or else with the other hand, yea, of great way, he sent of an ambassage of desirable conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he have, he cannot be not that my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its savior, wherefore shall it be seasoned? You know, it's just like, <laughs> that's a good analogy too. It's just like, uh, you know, I'm, I tend to like salt on my food, you know, uh, and when the salt has, especially if the salt has a good seasoning, it really it makes your food really taste good. But if the salt don't have no seasoning, if you ain't got no salt at all, it's not as desirable as, in regards to taste oftentimes. Verse 35, it is neither fit for the land nor ye for a dunghill, but men cast it out. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. Uh, glory to God. Amen. So see, people fail to count into the cost. What's the cost? Amen. You got to sacrifice everything. God wants, he don't want no gods, as he even talked about even in the Old Testament. He said he'll have no gods before him. That includes people, that includes places, that includes things. All right. Oftentimes, too, people fail to consider denying themselves. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Look at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Look what it says. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, we're going there real quick. Uh, it says what? Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him, here you go again, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If it was not important that Jesus emphasized this repeatedly in the word of God, he would, you know, it, you know, it, it just would simply wouldn't have been there. But it, it is significant. We have to deny ourselves. All right. In order to follow Jesus. Amen. Uh, amen. Luke chapter nine, verse 23. Luke chapter nine. We're going to verse 23. Luke chapter nine, verse 23. Look what it says here. And he said to them again, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. Look what it says here. Y'all notice daily. So we have to do this on a daily basis and in order to follow him and follow me. That's what he said there. Also, too, they failed to realize that 99.44 effort will not do. I remember they used to sing a song, 99, old mothers at the church, 99, 99 and a half won't do. Guess what? It won't do. It won't do. Amen. We got, God wants us to give him 100%. Amen. Amen. Mostly they fail. Why? Because also, too, they never really had any intention of being a follower of Christ. Amen. I'm going to share some more scriptures, amen, uh, that, that, that deals with that uh, in a little while. All right. Also, too, another thing, uh, you could jot these bullets down, too. These are good. They failed to listen to God's messengers. All right. They failed to listen to God's messengers. Why do people fail God? They fail to listen to God's messengers. When, and, 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 and we look in the word of God. We find that God through all throughout, and we talked to even last week and we talked, we've shared this with each other in regards to the Old Testament. We cannot have the, we can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament. And what God was speaking not only to the children of Israel and different ones in the Old Testament, guess what? He was speaking to us too. Amen. And he's been sending, just as he did in the Old Testament, he was sending his messengers for thousands of years. Amen. Warning people. Amen. Telling them to, uh, to follow the true and living God. Unfortunately, the results are often the same. People going to have people, unfortunately, because of man's sinful nature, they got they have minds of their own. They want to follow after themselves. Jeremiah, go to go to Jeremiah chapter seven, verse twenty five. I'm going there. All right. Uh, I, by the way, I just want to share with y'all, too, that uh, I actually use a, a very simple but fast, efficient Bible on my phone. And I would actually recommend you uh, get, get your hands on it if you got an Apple or I, I iPhone or Android phone. I could share the link with y'all uh, at the end if y'all want to see the uh, the Bible that I use 
uh, on my phone to go right to the scriptures. Of course, King James Version. All right. All right. Look, look here. Jeremiah chapter seven, verses 25. It's through 28. It says what? Since the days that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, that and he's talking about when Moses, uh, under the direction of God, came and directed the, the, uh, uh, help bring the children of Israel out of the Egypt. All right. Unto this day. Until right now, we, uh, uh, at this particular time in scripture, all right, he said, I have even sent unto you all my servants and the prophets daily. Look at here, rising up early and sending them. Look at verse 26. Yet, what did they do? They hearkened not unto me. They didn't listen, all right, unto me. Nor they inc uh, inclined their ear. Well, what did they do? They hardened their neck. And they did worse than their fathers. My God, the descendants of the ones that the ch children of, uh, even though we find in scripture, the, the original uh, children of Israel that, 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 came, that, that came out of Egypt, all right, they're the ones that traveled in the wilderness and they died. They didn't make it to the promised land, all right, but their children actually made it to the promised land. But we see, we find even after they made it to the promised land, they got knuckleheaded too. All right, it said what? But they hardened their necks and they did worse than their fathers, did worse than their foreparents. All right, verse 28. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken unto thee. Thou shalt also call on them, but they shall will not answer. But thou shalt say unto them, listen to this, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. Truth is perished. And it's cut off from their mouth. That's what happens a lot of times because people are not following and listening to the messenger when the truth is being given to them. Amen. They'll turn, they'll turn away. All right. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through six. Let's go there. Second Timothy. We're in the New Testament now. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. And we're going to go to verse number six. All right. 2 Timothy chap chapter 4, oh, excuse me, 1 through 6, verse 1 through 6. It says, what? That I charge thee there before, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his kingdom. All right? Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, reprove, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come. Mm, prophetic. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine they're not going to listen to the truth coming from the men and women of god all right but they're going to do what but after their own lust they shall do what heap to themselves teachers having itching ears all right and they shall turn away from the truth and should be turned under fables all right they're talking about those false uh, prophets and, and false preachers and false teachers uh, we touched on that even in, the, in we talked about it even in the book of revelations we saw that. That's what people are going to do. Amen. Also, too, why do people fail? Amen. Amen. Fail God. They fail to develop a virtues uh, of a Christian. They fail to develop the virtues of a Christian. This happens off, uh, when they really do not repent of their lifestyle. All right. When they make no changes in their behavior. We've seen it happen. A lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to give my life to the Lord and, uh, for whatever reason, you know, they, they just don't follow through. They make the, they, they, but they continue to do what they used to do before they said they accepted the Lord into their life as their personal Savior. I'm reminded of scripture that tells us that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things, the things of which that you used to do, that you knew that was, you knew in your heart that was not like God. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So there has to be a change of behavior. Amen. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2, ver, uh, chapter 1, verses 5 uh, through 11. All right. And if I'm moving too fast to where you can't follow these scriptures, amen, you can refer back to this because uh, this is going to be recorded. We're going to upload it. Amen. Amen. Or you can write them down. Listen to this here. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. It says, and besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. This is showing you how, amen, you can in fact truly be built up as a Christian. All right, look at verse number six. And to knowledge, temperance, got to have it. And to temperance, patience. And to patient, godliness. 
and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Charity is love. For these, for if these things be in you, do you hear this on today? For if these things be in you and abound, amen, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. So in order for you, so in order for you to be built up even the more in God, amen, 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 you have to have these virtues, amen, amen, unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at here. But he, verse, I'm at verse number nine now. But he that lack of these things, are y'all hearing this on today, is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See, if there, there has to, the Bible's letting us know here, it's going to be, it has to be a difference. All right, wherefore, look at verse number 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure God has called you. Amen. To be his disciple. Amen. In your election. Amen. The decision in which that you made to follow Christ. Make sure that it's sure. And for if you do these things, look at here. Do y'all see this? You shall not fall. See, with God, I, I, I can't fall. Look at verse number 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice that there. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you to abundantly, abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the only way we're going to attain it. Amen. Amen. If we do what God has called us to do. Amen. And if we have these virtues. Amen. As a saint and child of the most high God. Why do people fail God? Another reason here. Because they fail because of wrong association. I've seen this happen so many a times. Amen. Amen. And I, I uh, uh, and this was in fact Solomon's problem. Let's go to the book, Old Testament. Look here. Look what happened. Y'all know the story of Solomon. But we're gonna go there. Old Testament, the book of Solomon. Uh, uh, first, uh, not Solomon, but the book, uh, the for, book of First Kings. Excuse me, chapter eleven, verses one through three. First Kings, chapter eleven, verses number one through three. Look what the books. Look at the Word of God says here. But the king of Solomon did what? He loved many strange women, my God, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, the women of the Moabites, Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidianites, the Hittites. All right. All right. Of these nations, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. For surely they will turn away. Look, look at the word of God is telling you. They'll turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clave to these in love. And he had 700 wives, princes, 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass. See what happens? When Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, uh, his God. And as was, as was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went in after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidianites, and after Melchim, the abomination of Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went no further after the Lord as David his father. Verse number seven. Then Solomon did what? He built a high place for Chemosh, Chemosh the abomination of Moab in the hills before Jerusalem, and, and for Malak, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he also for his strange wives, which burned incense and sacrifices unto their God. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which, he had, which had appeared unto him twice. And he commanded him concerning these things, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not which the Lord commanded. Look at that there. Wherefore, verse number 11, wherefore, what did the Lord do? The, say, the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as you did, did, did done, uh, did, uh, done uh, did, as this is done of thee, thou shalt have not kept my co covenant, my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will do what? The Lord said, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in the, thy days, I will not do it for David, thy father's sake, but I will rend it out to the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rent away the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to, to thy son for, for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. My God, because of the wrong association. 
Amen. You know, and that's, a, that's really a sad state to be in, to in fact, to know the truth, but to not follow the truth. Amen. Go after all. And, and not only did he go after one God, he went after a bunch of false gods. We just read it there. All right. Uh, uh, people that weren't following the true and living God. That was, in fact, Solomon's problem. It can also be our problem. I think I've given this analogy before, but this is a real simple analogy. It's just like having a bowl of uh, apples. Get yourself, have a nice bowl of apples. All right. And, and, and take, you can take, we can take one of those apples out and we can take the other apples. Maybe we, in the, in the kind of preserve the one apple, let's put it in the refrigerator. But the other apples, let's leave it out in the open for a long period of time. Don't touch it, just let it stay out in the open. And what happens after a while? The apples that was out in the open, they, they'll begin to decay. They'll begin to rot. Now you could get now you could bring that bowl back. Go get that good apple out the refrigerator. I don't care how good that apple is. You set that bowl, I set that a good apple in that bowl of bad apples. Guess what? Probably won't even take a day. That good apple will start to become bad. And it don't even have to sit out in the in the uh, you know in the exposed in the atmosphere for a long time as long as the bad apples were. But because of the bad apples, uh, the good apple associated itself with the bad apples. Guess what? It became bad too. Amen. So, so a, what am I saying? So, in order for us to stay uh, good, Amen, in the Lord, guess what? We got to separate ourselves. Amen. We have to separate ourselves. Glory be to God. Amen. Even though we're in the world, you you can't be of the world. We're not of the world. Pastor Shaw talks about it often. We're different. We're peculiar. Amen. We, we're not proclaiming that we're better. Of course, we know we're better. We got Christ Jesus, but you're not, we're not down. We're not uh, putting folks down. Amen. But we, we're walking in the truth. We're walking in the light. Amen. 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 So we have to separate ourselves. You can't be, you can't be around circles of folks that you know that you don't smoke, you don't drink. But you be around folks that smoking and drinking and doing everything that you know a child of God should be doing. But you hang around them. I'm telling you, you be around them long enough, you will wind up doing the same thing they do. Be around folks that's, that's cursing and, and cutting the food. Amen. You, you don't do that. But you hang around them long enough. Amen. It's going, something's going to draw something. All right. Amen. And, and, and it's best for us to separate ourselves. Amen. People fail God because of wrong association. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go to the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33. Let's see what the book says. All right. Well, look at the book says. Be not deceived. I was just talking about this, right? Evil communication corrupts good manners. Evil communication. People ain't talking right. People using foul language. You know, when people around me, I, I'm telling you, you, listen, I tell them straight up, you got to respect me. I said, please don't use that language around me. Don't use that language around me. I don't talk like that, and I would appreciate it if you don't talk like that around me. Mm -hmm. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I, you know, you, we, we have to, we have to uh, set a standard, you know? What's that, that saying? <laughs> if you don't stand for something, but God, you know, you'll fall for anything. And I'm telling you, people will do that. That's why we got to let people know where, where we stand in God. All right. We don't have to walk around with a neon sign, you know, but guess what? We got to let our light so shine. As Jesus says, that men may see our good works and glorify not us, but the Father in heaven. Your companions guide you whether you realize it or not. Your companions guide you whether you realize or not. All right? All right? What's another reason as to why people fail God? They fail to be led by the word of God. All right? This is the key right here. They, and, they, and, they'll continue, and people will tend to do. They'll continue, they'll, they'll continue in their ignorance. Acts chapter 17, verse uh, 11. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Hosea chapter 4, verse 16. Let's go. I'm going to go to first. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study, and that's what we're doing on tonight. <laughs> Study to show thyself approved. See, we have the we have the approval of God when we get into his word. We have the approval of God when we desire more knowledge and wisdom from him. How do we obtain this? Through the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. See it? The a workman, all right, needed that needeth not be ashamed, rightfully dividing, amen, the word of truth. Amen. 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 And that's what God wants of us. Go, let's go to Hosea, Old Testament. I'm going to bounce over there. Ho, go, uh, Hosea, Old Testament. All right. Hosea, look, look what the Old Testament tells us. Chapter 4, verse number 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6. What does it say? <laughs> My people, all right, are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge. And what's God going to do for us? He said, what? I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Jesus, Lord help. That's a sad state to be in, y'all. Amen. Psalms 119 actually has 176 reasons for learning and respecting God's laws. Go to Psalms 119. Old Testament, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Let's see what the book says. Amen. What the, the word of God says. Blessed are they, the undefiled, in the Lord. Who do what? Who walk in the Lord of the Lord. Blessed are they to keep his testimonies, to seek him with they, thy whole heart. This is, this is powerful, y'all. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You know, another way you can look at that is they also do iniquity. Why? Because they walk in his ways. <laughs> Amen. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Good God Almighty. Oh, that what? That my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. They, then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Good God from Hazan. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. Do you hear this on today? When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will do what? I'll keep thy statutes. All right. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Whether withal, oops, excuse me. Oops. Whether withal shall a young man cleanse it, be cleansed in his ways by taking heed there unto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Good God from mighty, Almighty. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might, y'all heard people quote these scriptures. A lot of these scriptures that you heard folks quote come from Psalms 119. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Bless thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips I declare all the judgments of thy mouth. I rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much in all riches. I will meditate, mm, good God from Hazan, thy precepts, and I have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues, and I will not forget thy word. Amen. You know, it's hard to forget if you're constantly reading God's word, and you're constantly meditating on the word. You know, you're not only reading, but you're actually keeping God's word in your heart, in your mind. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And you, you it's hard for you to get, become unfocused. Why? Because you got the you got the word of God in your heart. You got the word of God in your mind. Amen. And you're staying focused on the things of God. Amen. The, and things which are pleasing to him. His statutes, his laws, his word. Amen. I will deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thy my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of the Lord. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh the, the, for the longest that have unto thy judgments at all times. O oh God, thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Good God am I. I could go on and on. Amen. But when you get a chance, I want you to read Psalms 119 in its entirety. 
Amen. It's going to bless you real good. Amen. It, yeah. That's the reason as to why we need to learn more of him and his word and respect his laws, God's ways. God's word is truth. John 17, verse 17. All right. All right. I'm going there. Amen. John 17 and 17. All right. Because I got a lot of scriptures. There's so many more. But I think these are focal scriptures that you could actually uh, uh, um, uh, meditate on and study. Amen. Even in your in your time. Amen. Even as we're going through after even after we've gone through them. Amen. Sancti Look what it says here in the book. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if we want to know the truth, if we want to walk in the truth, guess what? You got to get into God's word. Amen. Amen. Another reason as to why people fail God. They fail because of the demands of this life. Yes, yes. I've seen so many people, amen, to get caught up, amen, in, 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 in things of which that takes place in this life. Amen. 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 Because that's what happens. Consider we could actually consider the parable of the sower, the sower and the soils. That's talked about over in Luke chapter 8, verses 9 through 14. All right, life has so many distractions, everybody. Y'all can read that in uh, this, this parable in your leisure. All right, but life, we, do, we know that life has so many distractions. And we are the ones that are to allow the distractions oftentimes that'll keep us out of the du our duty to God. Amen. And that's why you got to ask for God's leading and direction so that you won't be distracted. Amen. Every day, every day, you you know, every day, every opportunity, every chance you get, you need to be in God's word. Amen. You need to, and, all, and that's how we learn more of him. Amen. Getting in his word. Amen. He said, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Amen. Another reason as to why people fail God. They fail, why? Because of the desire to be rich and to hold on to their riches. All right. Their possessions, things that they got, things that they have. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verses uh, 16 through 22. Look what the book says. Look what the book says. Amen. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, talking to Jesus, what things shall we do, they asked him, that I may enter, that I may have eternal life? He said, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou would enter into this life, Keep my commandments. Keep the keep the commandments, he, he said. Verse 18, he said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit no adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother, amen, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, all these things I've kept from my youth. Why, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that all thou have and give it to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Look at this. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowfully because he had great possessions. All right. He wanted to cover it. He wanted to hold on to all the riches and stuff he had. See, Jesus already know what he, what, what he, what he cherished and what he cared for. And that's why he challenged him, told him, if you love me, you're going to do away with that stuff. And that young boy wasn't trying to get up off of that stuff. <laughs> Amen. 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 But God wants you to focus on him because he said, if you seek, what did he tell us in the word of God? He also said what? He said, we seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. Guess what? You can be rich. Amen. But you got to seek the kingdom of God first. God and all, and you know, another thing too, God's not going to, uh, uh, have you be a steward over uh, uh, stuff when you can't even manage. That's why a lot of folks can't, can't even have st uh, stuff because they don't know how to deal with it when they get it anyway. Amen. But the first thing, most important thing we need to do, we need to seek the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And it's righteousness, as, the, as he said in his word. And he said, all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Paul warns of such things. Second Timothy chapter six, verses six, uh, six through 10. Second Timothy, I'm going there, I'm going there. First, first Timothy, excuse me, chapter six through 10, uh, six through 10, verse six through 10. All right, we're going there, we're going there. All right, it says what? But godliness, but godliness with contentment is great gain for we bought nothing into, do y'all hear this on today? 
for we brought nothing into this world and certainly we can't carry nothing out. Amen. I thank God, amen, for how God has given uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, so a lot of these people that are wealthy, they've done great things for society and different things. Uh, you know, Bill, Bill Gates, uh, not Bill Gates, um, what's the one? Uh, Steve Jobs uh, with Apple. Uh, different to turn, you know, totally turn the company around. Uh, different ones that have gone and came and gone. All right. Uh, started with nothing. All right. Gained the whole world. And guess what? When it was time for them to leave here, guess what? They could take nothing with them. You can't take nothing with you. Amen. No matter how much money you got, you could be the greatest billionaire, trillionaire in the world. Guess what? When you leave here, we all leave it here the same way, same way. Amen. We, amen. And unless Jesus come back and cracks the sky first, amen. Guess what? Some way, somehow, some way, we're, we're leaving up out of here. And you can't take the stuff with you. Amen. Uh, look at verse number, I'm, I'm at verse number uh, seven. But we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. God is speaking to us, y'all, tonight. And have, look at this. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But if they that are, will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolishness hurtful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition, for the love of money, not money, but the love of money, all right, not money itself, but the love of money, and a lot of people misquote this scripture, all right, but the love of money is the root of all evil, for which, for which, which while some coveted after. See, that's what God don't want us to do. There's nothing wrong with you being rich. There's nothing wrong with you having money. Amen. People got to teach this. Amen. But you shouldn't be, God don't want you coveting it. Amen. He don't want you getting caught up with it. He don't want you uh, uh, letting money be your God. Amen. A form of a God, like, you know, amen. With people, you, 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 you got to have it and this, that, and other. Amen. They have did what? They have erred from the faith and did what? And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Amen. Amen. This is what happened. Go down to verse number 17. Go to verse number 17. Charge them. I'm in the same script, same book. First Timothy chapter six. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, mm -hmm, nor trust uncertain riches, but in the living God who does what? Who gives us richly all things to enjoy. See, God, anything that we stand in need of, God will give it to us. And if you're a good steward, God will bless you with even that much more. But we got to be good stewards. Amen. Even walking this walk of life, we got to do the, that which is right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. When it comes to money, when it comes to finances, even too. Amen. All right. Uh, verse 18. They that do good, they that be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up what? Amen. In store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on to eternal life. Amen. See, when we, amen, when we seek God's wisdom and knowledge, amen, to how to even handle our money, even to handle our personal finances, guess what? God, God's going to bless you. Amen. You'll have, you'll have, you know what? You'll be, you'll be the one of which to, that'll have more than enough. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Uh, John also too warns us about worldly desires. First John chapter two, verses 15 and 16. I'm going there. Amen. First John chapter two. First John chapter two, verses 15 and 16. First John chapter two, verses 15, excuse me, through 17. All right. Love, listen here. Here, look at the word of God's telling us. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Notice what verse see, notice how verse 16 breaks that down. For all that is in the world. That's one thing. All right. All the stuff that's in the world, right? It goes on to say the lust of the flesh. That's another thing. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. Look what the, look at verse number 17. And the world does what? Passive away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God 
does what? Abide forever. And I don't know about anybody else, but I want to abide forever. Amen. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? They ain't, you know what? They ain't a person. <laughs> Y'all heard me say this, and I mean it with all sincerity. That you can't buy me. You, you can't buy me. I just can't be bought. I don't know about I don't know about you, but I can't be bought. Somebody dropped it. I, I saw it even uh recently, uh, I think just a couple of days ago, somebody won this. Y'all, y'all might have heard it on the news. Somebody won this mega million thing, and they actually won close to a billion dollars. Close to a billion dollars. If somebody dropped a billion dollars on you right now, ask you, would you turn your back on God or would you take this billion dollars? What would you do? Now, that sounds like a, a crazy uh, question. But that is, a, that, is a, that is a question that you need to know how to answer. And I tell you what, I, you know what? They, need, they might as well scoop it up and take it somewhere. Because what would it profit me to gain it? anything that the world has to offer and to lose my soul in the process. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it. This is also described by the terms covetedness, which amounts to idolatry. Colossians chapter three, verse five deals with that too. You can jot that down. All right. Why do people fail God? They fail God because sin is so deceitful. Yes, it is. Hebrews chapter three, verses 12 and 13. We're going there. Hebrews chapter three, Verses 12 and 13. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 12 and 13. Look what it says. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But what does God want us to do? But exhort one another while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And that's what sin does. Sin is deceitful. Amen. It'll, it'll, it'll put deceit in your heart, uh, make you do deceitful things. Amen. Amen. But that's why people fail God. Amen. Because of this uh, 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 sin and the deceitfulness of which that it produces. All right. While sin is deceitful, we must listen to this. We must remember that we and we sin. It is our choice. All right. When you sin, you made the decision to sin. Mm hmm. The deceitfulness comes from our own lust. Mm -hmm. James chapter 1, uh, verse number 13 and 14. We're going there. James chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Listen to what it says. Let no man says when he is tempted. I am tempted of God. We're all can, can be tempted. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth any man. But every man is tempted, and when he's drawn away with his own lust and enticed, all right? And I'm going to 15. Now, when lust is conceived, it bring, does what? It brings forth sin. And when and sin, when it is finished, what does it do? It brings forth death. What is the result of living in sin? Guess what? Death. Romans chapter 6, I'm reminded of scripture. Romans chapter 6, I believe verse 23 talks about it. What? For the wages, you can write that down. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to have eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's his gift to us. Amen. But we got to come out of sin. Amen. We got to come out of sin, sinful lust. Amen. Everything and anything that's not like God, we got to remove it out of our life. Amen. Take it away from me, Lord. Amen. This, that should be your prayer. Also, too, why do people fail God? Why, 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 why? Because they they because of because they fail because of false doctrines. All who teach anything different from what the Bible teaches, guess what? They're teaching a false doctrine. I'm not even gonna mention the, the, the religion, but y'all know of one. Uh there's a particular religion. Now, guess what? They out there. They, they, they in the streets. They be doing knocking on the doors, ringing people's bells, and they don't give you the they don't but they don't give you the uh, Bible. They wanna they wanna encourage you to take one of their comic books. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to get one of their. That's what I call it. It's a comic book. Yeah. With of of their interpretation, twisted interpretation. I'm not even gonna say what the Bible. I'm not even gonna say interpretation of the Bible. Just a twisted interpretation, period. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. But the Bible is truth. Amen. All right. And that's a false doctrine. All right. This can happen when people add to scripture. Listen, 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 listen. When they add to scripture. And it can happen when people delete things from scripture. One particular uh, version of the Bible that, that I'm, I don't like, and I, I would, we've talked about this in Bible study at our church, uh, uh, I, th I think last year and previously, all right, is the NIV. Why, do, why, do, why, doesn't I, why don't I like the NIV? Because they've actually removed scriptures from that book. Mm -hmm. They've taken, and, and important scriptures too, you can't find it in NIV. The closest uh, uh, translation to the original writings from the Greek, uh, Hebrew, Arabic language is the King James Version. All right. All these other, that's why I don't get caught up in all these other versions. All right. Because they're changing the, the, the way the scriptures are reading. They're taking out scriptures. We read it in the book of Revelation. The book has been written, it's closed. Nothing's to be added or taken away. That's what God gave John in the book of, we read it, we studied it, what, a week or two, a couple weeks ago, whatever, amen, take, folks take it away from the scriptures, all right, it also happens when they change the message, and that's what I find that happens with a lot of these, these new versions that people are trying to come out with, all right, First Timothy, Chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. I'm going there. First Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Look at here. Look what the word of God says. Now, the spirit does what? Speak of expressingly that in the latter time, what are some people going to do? Some shall do what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to what? To seduce their spirits. And doctrine, look where he said the doctrine is coming from, the devils. Uh-huh. Doctrines of devils. Speaking what? Lies and hypocrisy. Having their consciences here, seared with hot iron. Forbidden to marry. Commanded to abstain from meats which God have created to be received with thanksgiving to them which believe in the knowledge of the truth. For every creature, look at what God's saying, of God is good and nothing to be refused. If what? If it be received with thanksgiving. Now, that's another Bible study. A lot of folks got problems with different type animals that you're not supposed to eat and all this other kind of carrying on. But y'all see what the, you see what the word of God says, right? Mm-hmm. God's word is truth. Amen. Go to Acts chapter uh, 20. Acts chapter 20. Amen. That's why, that's why I eat what I eat. Because God said everything he made is good. Amen. If received with thanksgiving unto him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Give me some hog marks and some chitlins. Amen. <laughs> Can I get some help up in here? Amen. I like big feet. Yeah. Come on. I used to like fat back too, but it's too salty. <laughs> you know, mom used to cook it, slice it. Sometimes on Saturday, whatever day it was. And it was cheap too, actually. You know, less expensive, you know. Amen. But look what look what Acts chapter 20, verse 28 through 31 says. Take heed unto yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost uh, have made you overseers to do what? To feed the church of God, which he's purchased with his own blood. For I know this, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you not sparing the flock. Amen. If you don't get a knowledge and understanding of the truth of God in his word, amen, that's what can happen to you. All right? There's going to be wolves that can enter among you. And they, and, and, and you know what a wolf, you know what a wolf does? You know, if, if a wolf's preying upon somebody and get it cornered or something uh, and get it cornered, wolves going to do what a wolf's going to do. And you got people and folks like that today all right that's teaching people uh not the truth of god but they're teaching false doctrine all right false doctrine untruths lies deception my god from zion why do people fail god they fail god because they fail because they are set in their own ways mm -hmm. proverbs 14 
verse number 14. Also, chapter 1, verses 3 through 30. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to 14 and 14, Old Testament, real quick, real quick, Proverbs 14 and 14. And we're actually almost through, y'all, amen, uh, with our, our presentation. But Proverbs 14 and 14, let's see what the book says, all right? The backslider in his heart should what? Should be filled with his own ways. Do y'all see this here? And a good man should be satisfied from himself. I'm going to, I'm going to 1, chapter 1. Verse 30 through 30. Uh, 30. Oops. Verse 30, chapter 130. They would none of my, they would, they would none of my counsel. In other words, they didn't want to listen to what I say. Mm -hmm. They despise all my proof, my reproof. Therefore, what? Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own device. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safety and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Oh, glory be to God. I feel like shouting right there. Hard-headed, stubborn, whatever you want to call it. People got their own way. Y'all know that. You know some folks like that. You probably were like that at one time. I'm praying you ain't like that now. Amen. Amen. But hard-headed, stubborn. Whatever you want to call it. People got their own way, own mind. One can reject God. Why? Because he does not fit their own concept of what God should be. Mm-hmm. Why do people fail God? They lose their love for God. Mm-hmm. In all likelihood, the truth be told, they never really developed a love for God in the first place. This just happens to be an excuse. Uh-huh. John 14, 15, Revelations chapter 2, verse 4, Matthew chapter 24, verse number 12. I'm going to go to John 14 and 15. John chapter 14, verse number 15. John chapter 14, verse number 15. What did he say there? If you love me and keep my commandment, if you love me, you keep my commandment. And I'm going to go I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go on down to verse number 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Mm. What's the other comforter? Another comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That will do what? That he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. All right. Verse 17 is a continuation from verse 16. All right. The spirit of truth which the world, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be with you. Good God from Zion, the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. Amen. And, she, and, and, and he dwells with us, leading us, guiding us through all paths of truth. Look at verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless, for I will come and with you. My God. Mm, 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 mm. Glory to God. We could go. Y'all could actually read the rest of chapter 14. We, 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 it, it's beautiful. God's letting us know how he desires to deal with us. Oh, glory to God. If we have the love for him. Glory be to God. Matthew 24, verse number 12. This is powerful, y'all. Matthew chapter 24, verse number 12. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to verse number 12. And because of the iniquity abound, mm -hmm, sin, all right, the love of many should do what? Max wax cold, all right? It's going to wax cold, all right? If you, it's going to wax cold. Continuing thought in verse number, I'm actually going to keep it moving. Look at verse number 13 in chapter 24. It says, what? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Ah, shah. glory to God. Glory to God. If we endure, if we got the love of God on the inside, God said we're going to be saved. You're saved without a shadow of a doubt. Glory to God. Why do people feel God? They feel but God because of an inactivity and complacency. This has another word, y'all. Apathy. All right? All right? 
laziness. James chapter 2, verse number 14. James chapter 2, verses number uh, 14 through 26. I'm not going to uh, probably read the whole thing. Amen. But James chapter 2, verse 14. Amen. What does it profit a man, it says, my brother, that, thou, that though a man shall say he has faith and have no works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and the one of you said to them, Depart in peace, be ye warned, filled, notwithstanding, you give not them not those things which are needed to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it had not works, dead is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I got works. Show me thy faith without works, and I'll show you thee my faith by my works. Thou believest. Amen. That there is one God that dwell does well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that thou faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seeing thou hast faith as wrought with his works? And by work was his faith made perfect? And the scriptures was what? They was fulfilled which said Abraham did what? He believed God and was and put and it was and put it unto him for righteousness, for he was called the friend of God. Yeah, yea, see how that by works and a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them from another uh, out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Mm. So it's not just enough. You got to have some works too, uh, uh, family and friends. Amen. God has called you, amen, to, to work for him, amen, in his vineyard. No, you don't have to uh, get, obtain the title of a minister. You don't have to attain no title for that. Amen. All right. In a, in a church body. But God saved, God desires to save you, to, 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 to utilize, and to utilize you to help get help someone else get, uh, come to Christ, you can't save nobody else, but God, but 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 the light that shines in you, it could draw someone else to who Christ, Amen. Everyone who falls in anything, uh, fall fails, excuse me, in anything has this problem. The person who gets nothing out of church when they do not attend services is, is that type of person. All right, such an excuse is in fact everyone a cop out for failing to do what they should have done. Mm -hmm. In my conclusion here, uh, there are many reasons, and we could have actually talked and elaborated on more as to why people fail God. Most of these reasons listed actually, and we've shared and discussed on tonight, uh, come about because people do not put forth a sincere effort in trying to please God. Truth is, there are individuals that are probably trying to place the blame anywhere but upon themselves. I know a lot of folks like that. I'm sure you do too. Amen. They will not work. That will not work on judgment day. All right. And I, I, I challenge you on tonight, everyone, and those of you to listen on the internet and, and here in our Bible study, are you ready to put forth your failure in the past? Because guess what? Whatever's transpired in your life in the past, guess what? It's the past. You can't change it. You can't fix it. It's already taken place. It's done. But now is the day Amen. Of salvation. This is the day that we could, you know, this could, this could be a new beginning for many of you. Amen. That we could start serving the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. Are y'all still with me? Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Why do people fail God? Amen. Amen. Why do people fail God? Amen. And that's what we wanted to just share tonight. Um, anybody want to add a comment, have questions? Hey Amen. You can at this time. Very good lesson. Thank God. Very good lesson. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. That's what y'all, you with us? <laughs> yeah, I yeah I'm with you. Okay. All right. Beautiful, beautiful lesson. We you see your video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a subject matter that I felt that, you know, you know, people need to deal with, you know, to learn about and understand truly. Uh, it's important. Uh, it's good to know how we could possibly fail. 
And that way, mm -hmm. that, that, that way you'll know how to prevent from failing. You know, when you have an understanding as to the, the things in which that can potentially make you fail, uh, God. And uh, we don't want to be a failure. Amen. I don't know about anybody else, but I want all that God has for me, all that God has intended for me in my life. Amen. I want to be a, uh, the man of God that God, God has called upon to do his will and work in this latter day. I want to be an example, continue to be an example to my children, my children's children. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and God, and I'm, I've been doing that even here, even at the house. Amen. And Pastor, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I told you, I didn't even share this with you, but uh, I, I do, I do, I do Bible study and church service with the, with the grandkids. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, we oh. do. On Sunday afternoons, we get around the oh. channel in the living room. Uh, uh -huh. They'll sing some songs. Uh, each one of them, some of them will lead a uh, prayer. Uh, right. We go to scripture and we study, uh, yeah, do a study on the word. Amen. We know right. we can't be in the church building, but we but this is what we're doing. We're we're continuing in the faith. Amen. And that's what yeah. God wants us to do. Even if we even in the midst of our homes, guess what? Ain't nothing changed. Man. Amen. I still have my praise. I still have my worship. Praise and worship. Glory to God. I still have my church service. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hey man, I, be, I mean, I know y'all see me. This is actually my uh, music room uh, down here in the basement. My, I guess you could call it my computer room, Bible study room, prayer room too. Amen. But, amen. But, amen. But we just thank God. Amen. Uh, you know, the saying is you can't go wrong standing in the face of God. Oh, no, you can't. You can't. You can't I'm telling thing. you. I'm telling you. And it's present. And that's, you know, you say that make me think about us as kids. How we all used to mm -hmm. get in doing our church thing and whatever, whatever. And a lot of times we would just emulate what's going on in the church. <laughs> we get together and I could see, you know, uh, what you call maybe gay leading out with a song or whatever, whatever. Next thing you know, you were having church. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You started off playing, but something else took place, right? I remember going to Wilbur's, and you know, and they be in one room, we'd be in the other room, and all of a sudden you hear somebody singing. And you know, they lead that way they at and come together. You, uh -huh. you know? and, and the Spirit of the Lord take over. The Spirit of the Lord, you know. Uh -huh. but, you know, that's a part, like I say, of staying in the, the face of God. You yes, know? yes, so, yes. You know. And if, if, if we do that, uh, Brother Ray, we will not fail. We will not fail. I uh, look at things, you know, uh, what you call was with us Sunday uh, during the service. She heard the whole service, Keisha. Yeah, all right, all right. You know, and God put people in places sometimes where they can't get away from here. Mm -hmm. you, 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 mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they don't, the words that he worked in mysterious ways. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I believe I was listening to the service in your car, right? Or something. Right. And you right. know, at the time, you know, she dealing with herself because she had put something on Facebook and she was dealing with tea. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But God put her in the presence of the word. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I, I, I thank God for hey, it. Hey, remember what we, remember what I, uh, I preached on Sunday, right? Faith that gets results. You, you know, <laughs> like I said, uh, mm. you know, uh, I think about the things that you said, even with the lesson, and I think about, you know, even people, the Israelites, God had gave them everything. Everything. And you spoke tonight that when the guy was preaching to him, he told me it was like the Moses days. Yes, it was. That's what yeah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah they, talked you know, about. For all them years and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, they still, and it didn't really change until we come into the New Testament. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But uh, good lesson, good lesson. Praise God. And, and, you know, and like I said, it's a good thing. One of the things that you said, you got to study the word. You have to. You have yeah. to know the word. And people don't understand that you have to. You can't just get up and quote, 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 quote. You got to study the word to know what you're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have to know the word, too, also, too, because when... It, it, if and when God provides us the opportunity to 
to meet and encounter people. We'll know what to minister, how to say, and encourage them. Amen? Through the word of God. You know, we can, say, we can say things that are on our heart, but we need to reaffirm what we're trying to share by the word of God. You know? You, mm -hmm. you, you spoke on that too tonight. You know, that said that's where the wisdom and knowledge come in. But then again, you spoke that he will lead you through all truth. Yes. You no, know, if you hold back your self, yourself, and let God speak for you, you will speak the right thing to them. You, right. You, you know what I'm saying? You can't go by what you feel. You got to go by what God, you know, and you talked about that comfort and that spirit. That's right. The Holy Ghost. That's the right. Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, right. And the spirit will lead you and guide you. Yes, you it know? will. And so, you know, you got a lot working for you. Absolutely. You just got to use it. Come on. You know. That's it. Amen. And, and like I said, you know, you talked about some of them people. And I, I, I think a lot of them people just ain't his sheep. No. Well, I kind of touched on that in a nice way. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You know, they, you know? the, the truth of the matter, they just they really didn't have the love in the first place. From the beginning. Mm -mm. They they're not his sheep. People talking. But, they, but what is what happens? They're not saying what they ain't living. They're, they're, a, they're a lot of them are cult. They're a cult. Let a man a man come along. I know somebody right now, they, they was pastoring and left their church and followed these people, coming up with some craziness. Oh, you know. Wow. Oh. So you gotta, you gotta, gotta know God, you but know, you for yourself, because man will let you down. Man will fool you. And the devil is a, that's what he said, he, he walking to and fro. Devil is still walking to and fro, who, seeking whom he made a vow. He wanted to vow you. He's doing you know? it. Look at the mm -hmm. country. Would you would say those people are reprobate? Yeah, because they believe in a they believe yeah they believe in a lie rather than the truth. And guess what? A lot of them right now that is reported that some of them are saying they all confused. They wonder they they really believe what they was believing, you know. And that's yeah. what we got to pray for people. And we are the biggest thing that we can do as people of God is to walk so people can see your life and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You can talk, even tell people, try to draw them, but the most of the way you draw somebody is through your life. And you know, they may even get saved while you can see them get saved. A lot of people's parents died, they ain't seen you get saved, but God knows you had a time where he was gonna bring in because you know the truth, you know? So you the seed was planted. You know, That's the main thing, we just, you know? Shall you say that, but you know, then if you go back to the word, it says, He with the ear, let him hear. Right. Everybody not gonna hear. Right. They may not hear at that time, huh? but you just believe God that you, you plant the seed. Yeah, but then, I'm saying when you plant that seed, I think he has an ear. You right. know, he now, everybody don't like, receive it. You know. That's like yourself. You didn't receive it at the time, but you got the seed planted. It, it finally grew up, didn't it? I, I, I believe that and I understand that, but also I think I had a year where I hear where I heard the you know the voice of Christ. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying that some people, I don't care. It's like the guy he spoke today. He said the guy was telling them and tell them. They weren't hearing what he was saying. They weren't hearing what the ministers were saying, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it was Jeremiah, whoever you spoke on. Right, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, you understand what I'm saying? And he was telling them people, you know, that they were just like the people during Moses' time. Yes, he did. Just and like they him. knew the way because they were studied the way from the time. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying that sometimes I don't care how much you get up and speak the truth. They're not going to hear. Yeah, some folks are just not going to hear. Gonna yeah, you know, that's, because, saying, that's some yeah. people are reprobates too. They don't they really believe that's a lie. The word said it. a lie, yeah. then the truth. Right. That's it. That's it. And that's what he was preaching tonight. Why people fail God? They fail God because they fail to listen. But he said, It's not my will that any should perish. It's not his will that you should perish. He died for the whole world, for everybody. So it's a choice you make. What he said, it's not my will that any should perish, but they come to the knowledge of the truth. Right. Hmm. If you don't come to the knowledge of the truth, 
You may hear the truth, but you know, and like I said, everybody do not get it right away. But just pray that you you be that example, you know. Right. You know that's why we're here. That's, that's, that's scripture because Paul didn't get it right away, right? Right. No. He was a, he was he was putting it, he was having people put in jail. That's what I'm saying. He did a lot. He did a lot of things. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So they always the worst one. They ain't the one that when you think gonna make it. Sometimes people you think they gonna be in heaven, they gonna beat some of these people who think they on their way to heaven. That's what they don't to say. <laughs> <laughs> what he just say? Depart from me, I never do you. Mm -hmm. That's what the word said. You know, but like I say, the word is true. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's just amazing to me that the Old Testament has so much value. Of course. A lot of people just want to live in the new. Mm -hmm. You, you that know, was, and that and was like, your school. I, that's your schoolmaster. That's your schoolmaster. You started off like that you, we wouldn't have the new without the old. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And how you know the scripture just go back to the old testament. And the same thing, like some of the stuff that's going on in the new, it was done in the old testament. You go to Psalms, you know, and like you said, people quote these things in Psalms. That's in the old testament. But yet mm -hmm. still he's talking about the love of God right there. Yeah. We people today have a different relationship with God. You, you understand what I'm saying? But David was quoting that to the people that didn't have a relationship because only certain people had that relationship. Right. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Very good lesson. Fantastic. Anybody else want to share? Sister Wanda. Yes. <laughs> I was touching the screen. Yeah, I was like, let me see if I can touch it. You have a comment or a question? I was, uh, I was touching the screen. Uh, All right. We, we, we hope it was good. I enjoyed it. You, Praise God. I mm -hmm. took as many notes as I could. <laughs> All right. All right. Yep, yeah, that's what, that's what I do, Sister Wanda. I take notes. I take notes. I thank God for the word. Amen. I tell you, I just I got that habit from school. Ever since I, I I be I be people come to church to preach. Anybody talk preach? I, I got notes. <laughs> Amen. Well, well, this, this was a good lesson to be preached. Man, you know what I'm saying, and you don't have to do just the way you did it. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? It's something to understand. Yeah, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, you know, you know, even though the sermon be good, the church people understand where you're going to or where you're coming from. But the novice that's not, don't. You, you know, understand what I'm saying? This is, like you say, a teaching. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and sometimes I think people have to be taught. That's the reason why I said, you know, it's good to... Uh, study the word and to study the word together because a lot of times I might not understand here, but the way you break it down, you understand, I understand there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's where the, the wisdom and the knowledge come and the truth come. That's it. That's you it. Know? Fantastic. Yeah. Thank God for you, brother Ray. Praise God. No, All right, that's... family and friends, this has been good. This we're going to get, get ready to sign off. Uh, uh, for those of you. Uh, don't forget away from my family. Absolutely, Sparky. What Sunday? Sunday the first. Sunday no? the first. That's right. That's a reminder. That's right, right. Ray. Yes, yeah, first, uh, first Sunday, uh, we will be uh, having communion on this Sunday. So we ask everybody to can and invite your family and friends to come on too. Amen. Have your cracker and your juice. Amen. And we're gonna be fellowshipping together the uh, uh, the communion. Amen. El, brothers, El Show. Yes. Pastor. Sunday. Sunday is the fifth Sunday. Oh, it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Excuse me. That's why I was by one day. By one day. <laughs> the morning, the morning <laughs> you're, the you're right. So the first Sunday will actually be the seventh. It's, uh, seven. Okay. Yeah, the seventh. All right. That's All right. why I was asking. I knew it was close. Right. All right. So uh, so we'll, we'll be coming together this Sunday. Until then, everybody, just I pray you just have a blessed uh, evening. Amen. Enjoy the remainder of your week. Amen. Stay in God's word. Stay connected. Yeah, tell and and tell Sugar, maybe Ella Shaw tell Sugar, maybe we have her to preach on Sunday. 
All right, absolutely. We we call that you you I, 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 I'm a, I, I tell Sugar call you. I tell Sugar. All right, tell, yeah. all right, Sparky. Thank you so much. Tell, tell all the nieces and nephews and grandkids to get on. We call that you Sunday. All right, Sister Wanda, you were trying to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, Sugar sent me a text. She said, "Tell them it keep kicking me out." For some reason it keeps saying internet unstable. Oh, oh that, yeah. that must be her internet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been recorded. We, we we recorded this, so she could actually look back on it. I maybe share the video recording so they could people could look at it too. Um, All right, but, but listen. Uh, that about Sunday. They want her to preach you Sunday. All right, absolutely. We'll get in touch with her. Yeah. Somebody get in touch with her for me. All right, for us. All right. And I told her to have all the youth get on, all them grandkids. Invite the family, invite your friends. All right, we're going to pack it out. All right, mm -hmm. listen, everybody, this has been good. Uh, we're going to close with a word of prayer. Sparky asked for prayer for her family. Hey, Amen. We're going to close with a word of prayer, all right? All right. Brother Ray, take us out in prayer. Come on. Father, my cousin Sparky is asking for prayer. We thank yes, you. Sir. We thank you for Sparky. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. Lord. We can always know that whenever we have her, that she's going to be there. Amen. So yes, you, know what yes, is, you know what all Thank our you, is. You know, we all know what all our petitions are. You know, we ask you, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you. you. And your grace. You know, I tried to make it when I pray on my knees by myself to tell you, I love you, Father. You yes, are Father, sir. and I love you. You know, a lot of times we pray, we don't give you that word itself that we love you. Yes, but I love you. And I thank you for all things. We asking you to save, sanctify, and fill with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. We ask you to whatever Pookie is going through, you know, whatever surgery or whatever that she could have, that she's in control of the doctors. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All mm -hmm. these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, family and friends, this has been awesome. Until Sunday, God willing, amen, y'all y'all take care, and I love y'all family and friends, all right? Love you too. God bless. God bless.